Welcome everybody to day four of this free spoken English course on your channel succeeding. So far, we have covered subject and its forms, subject and verb, and word order or position of words. Today, we're going to look at the present tense. Generally, we think of the present tense in just four forms. We look at the present indefinite, the present continuous tense, present perfect and present perfect continuous. But today, we're going to add more angles to looking at the present tense. If you know Hindi, you will be able to completely relate with the content in this video, as you will find that the expressions we discuss today are very often found in the day-to-day -day Hindi that you use. So. Whether you are a beginner or an advanced learner, you will find this video helpful. So, let's get started. Present tense. The present tense is used in many forms. Let's look first at present indefinite. Present indefinite, also known as simple present. Sentences of present indefinite have Ta hai, te hai, ti hai attached at the end. For example, wa college mein padta hai. Koyal urti hai. Apart from this, indicating habits, general facts, and universal truths is another feature of this form of present tense. The formula for translating such sentences is subject plus v1 or v5 if you are translating a positive sentence for example he studies in a college nightingale flies in the case of negative or interrogative forms of such sentences simply use do or does as the helping verb in the sentence for example he does not study in a college does nightingale fly I suppose by now it is um, quite clear that we will use V5 or the S or ES with the verb in case we are translating a sentence with he, she, it or noun in it. Similarly, does will be used only with he, she, it and noun. With I, we, you, they will use the first form of the verb and do has the helping verb. The first form of verb is used with I, we, you, they. The same rule is applied in case you use do as a helping verb. They exercise daily. Do they exercise daily? The fifth form of verb is used with he, she, it and noun. The same is applicable in case does is used as a helping verb in the sentence. He exercises daily. Does he exercise daily? At times, people make the mistake of using verb to be with the present indefinite tense. But remember that the main verb can only be in two forms when verb to be or ismr was were is present in the sentence. Either use ing with the verb or v4 or use the past participle form of the verb. Or V3. He is living in Nevada or he is loved by all. We cannot under any circumstances say he is exercise or they are exercise. The only condition under which we will use is MR was were is with either V4 or V3. Let's look at conditional sentences. Agar wa aega to mai jaunga. Jab tak wa nahi aega, tab tak mai nahi jaunga. In such sentences of Hindi, we see future indefinite used in both clauses. However, when translating in English, only one clause is translated in the future indefinite tense. 
The part which lays the condition is translated in the present tense and the clause which indicates the result is in the future. For example, if he comes, I will go. So you can see that the condition here is if he comes. Since it is the condition, it's been kept in the present tense. The result, which is my going, has been kept in the future tense. So I will go. Similarly, I will not go until he comes. So again, the condition here is his coming. So that part, or the part which describes the condition, has been kept in the present tense, and the part which describes the result, which is my going, has been kept in the future tense. Please don't make the mistake of translating both clauses in the future tense as some people do. If you say, if he will come, I will go, or I will not go until he will come, you will have incorrect sentences. And on a day to day basis, people use such expressions a lot. But um, if you just remember the rule that we have discussed for conditional sentences, you will avoid these errors. Let's look at present imperfect, also known as present continuous tense. With the present imperfect tense, we see raha hai, rahe hai, rahi hai at the end of a Hindi sentence. They also indicate a continuous action. For example, we log pad rahe hai. The formula for translating such sentences is subject plus verb to be plus verb plus ing. Something that should be mentioned here is that with love, feel, hope, fear, we don't use the verb ing. And why is that? Well, the reason is that these verbs are considered imperfect. So don't make the mistake of saying, I'm loving it, as McDonald is uh, very fond of saying. I think one of the reasons why McDonald is um, allowed or permitted to do that is because they are marketing their product and when you're marketing a product or doing anything to promote something or to make something attractive or sound good, you're allowed to take the liberty of violating grammar rules. But if you are communicating or if you're communicating in a formal context, in a business context, if you're communicating uh, in writing, if you just want your grammar to be good, you will need to follow some uh, structural principles and saying I'm loving it won't really uh, be correct. Similarly, avoid saying I'm feeling, I'm hoping, I'm fearing. Instead say I love, I feel, I hope, I fear. There is another verb that I would like to discuss here and that is have. So a lot of times when making a possessive sentence, people say I'm having a car or I'm having a pen or you are having an issue. Please avoid this expression because ing with have to will be a grammatical violation. ing with have should be used when you're talking about either consumption or an experience. So if I say I'm having my lunch, that is correct because I'm talking about consuming something. Or if I say I'm having an awful time, that will also be correct because I'm talking about an experience. So except for experiences and consumption, avoid using ing with have. Let's look at some more present imperfect sentences. Hum kal hi ek hospital kholne ja rahe hai. Maine ye project complete, maine ye project complete karne ja raha hu. So such sentences indicate intention. They have ja raha hu, ja rahe hai, ja rahi hai towards the end. The formula for translating such sentences is subject plus verb to be 
plus going plus infinitive. For example, we are going to open a hospital tomorrow. I'm going to complete this project. I think we have a repeat of the slide here. Okay, let's look at sentences showing a tendency. Wah gata raha hai. Wei log ghanto baat karte rahte hai. Such sentences show, and I would like to correct the first sentence by the way, it is wah gata rahta hai. And the second sentence, of course, is Velo Ganto Bate Karte Rate. So such sentences show that a work continues in the present tense and is a tendency of some kind. In Hindi we see Rana, uh, Rata, Rehti, Rehte at the end of such expressions. The formula for translation subject plus go on or goes on plus verb plus ing. Or subject plus keep or keeps plus verb plus ing. For example, he goes on singing. They keep talking for hours. So you can apply whatever formula you like. Personally, I go with uh, the second one. It comes more naturally. I think this is what you would notice. You would be more inclined towards saying they keep talking for hours instead of he goes on talking for hours. But that's a personal choice. Let's look at sentences showing an exclusive tendency. Now what do I mean when I say exclusive tendency? I mean something like this. Look at a sentence like Wa gata hi rehta hai. Ve log ghanto baat hi karte rehte hai. Such sentences indicate that the subject does only one kind of activity and nothing else. Therefore, the formula for such sentences will be subject plus do or does nothing but and the main verb. For example, he does nothing but sing. They do nothing but talk for hours. Again, you will find the need to use such expressions a lot on a day-to-day -day basis. And one of the mistakes that people make while discussing the present tense is that they avoid discussing expressions such as these because even though there is a need to use such expressions it doesn't really get covered in uh, the overall scheme of things when discussing tenses but i've tried to include it to make it as relatable as possible to everyday english Let's look at sentences indicating very soon to start actions. Ve jane jane ko hai. Wa jane ko hi hai. Or wa jane hi ko hai. Wa jane hi par hai. Such sentences indicate the action is going to start very soon. The formula for translating such sentences is subject plus verb to be plus about plus infinitive. So, Something like, he is about to go. Sentences indicating the start of an action. Wa khane lagta hai. Wa padhen lagta hai. So such sentences indicate the beginning of some action. Formula for translating such sentences? Well, you can use subject plus begin or begins plus infinitive or a gerund. And let me give you some examples. Um, I will give these examples right after discussing this formula. So you can also say subject plus start or starts plus infinitive and gerund. So uh, following the first formula you can say he begins to eat or he begins eating. He And he begins to eat of course we have used uh, begin or begins with infinitive. And in the second one, we have used the gerund, eating. You can also say he starts to read or he starts reading. So it's completely a matter of personal choice what you decide, what style you decide to go with. 
Let's look at sentences indicating emphasis. मैं सुनता ही तो हूँ वह पढ़ता ही तो है So such sentences indicate that something is being emphasized. We use the following translation formula for these types of sentences. Subject plus do or does plus infinitive. Without to, mind you. For example, I do listen. He does read. Let's look at present perfect. हम लोगों ने ये जाना है. उसने ट्रेन मिस कर दी है. So such sentences indicate that the action has just been completed or recently completed. Formula for translating such sentences. Subject plus has or have plus past participle or the third form of verb. Let's look at another aspect of present perfect. Garmi a chuki hai. Mera phone kho gaya hai. In such sentences, what we're indicating is that the action has been completed a long time ago. It will be incorrect to translate such sentences with the has or have plus v3 method that we learned earlier. To translate such sentences, use the following formula. Subject plus has, a subject plus verb to be plus past participle. For example, summer is come or my phone is lost. Let's look at present perfect continuous now. हम लोग सीखते रहे हैं वह हमेशा सफल होता रहा है Such sentences indicate that the action which began in the past is still continuing. Formula Subject plus has been, have been plus present participle or the fourth form of verb. For example, we have been learning. He has always been succeeding. Another aspect of present perfect continuous is what we are looking at currently in the slide. So sometimes instead of a main verb, we use an adjective. For example, we say, Wa fit raha hai, or main busy raha hu. The formula for such sentences is that you replace the V4 with an adjective. And subject plus has been or have been plus adjective completely fits in. So the above sentences, Wa fit raha hai, and my busy Rahu can be translated as he has been fit and I've been busy. So that's all, folks. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Please uh, do like, comment, share, and subscribe uh, to this video. It helps us to make uh, more such helpful content for you and keep coming up with new ones. Until next time, bye bye. Mm -hmm.